Welcome to the Brass Hand Woodwind Shop. This is the seventh video in the Herald Trumpet Restoration Project, and I think this is going to be the second to the last video. I'm going to start this video by putting these two pieces of the bell back together. One of my viewers suggested that I put a screw rim bell on here, and I thought that was an interesting idea, but then I thought about it. They don't sell that, obviously, for Herald Trumpets, so I would have to make one on the lathe, and I could do it, but it would probably take probably eight hours to do that. I just decided it was not worth it, so I'm just going to put a collar on here. I'm going to get my box of brass parts, and I am going to see if I can find a part for that in that box. Here's my box of brass stuff. Whenever I take a part off of an instrument, I just throw it into here. And then when I need a piece of scrap brass or tubing or a ferrule or something, I'll just go in here to get it. Usually, I can find what I need in here. A few weeks ago, you'll probably remember on one of the videos, I found this part in there, and I got it off of an old uh, trombone lyre. I'm going to look for a part in here. It's going to be a piece of tubing to fit those two pieces together. Since this tubing is tapered, I'm going to need to find a piece that is tapered in here, and also it cannot be curved. It has to be a straight, tapered piece. I have my calipers. This measures in thousandths of an inch, and it will probably the tubing will probably go up to about there. So let's see what we have. About, um, about 600, approximately 615 thousandths of an inch right here for the large part. Then the small part on the other part of the bell is, what is that, about 590 thousandths. So I need about 25 thousandths or a 40th of an inch taper from here to here. So I'll see what I can find in this box of tubing. I have a lot of trombone slide parts in here. Those are not going to work. This one's from an F attachment of a trombone. It's a little bigger. Still not going to work though. So let's see, nothing from a trombone will work. This is from a flugelhorn that got smashed up pretty badly. Uh, let's see, nope, it's pretty close, but not going to work. Yeah, it almost fits over the small section, but not over the big one. Let's see, French horns, not going to work at all. I'll take those out. Trombone wire worked on the last one, but I'm sure it will not work on this one. Lots of trombone wires in here. Here's something that's probably the right size, but it's curved. Look at this. Do you know what that is? It looks like a 7. It's actually part of a 4. I went to an auction and I bought a whole bunch of brass 4s, and they didn't have any 1s. I needed a 1 for my shop, so that's what that is from. Let's see. There has to be something in here that will work. Flute head joint. I think those are a little bigger than, uh, yes, too big. Let's see, that looks like it's not tapered, but if it fits, let's see, that's a little bit big. Let's see if it fits on the other section. No, that's way too big. I could shrink it if I needed to, but if I do, well, anyway, I'll put this off to the side. I may have to use this, but. Let's see what we can come up with first, if anything better. Okay, there has to be something else in here. Part of a sousaphone upper and lower neck. Let's see if that will fit. Oh, wow, that's pretty close. Huh, I might have to use that. I hope the tuba players out there forgive me for this one. Let's see, of course that's not going to work. Let's see how it fits on the other section. It's a little tight, but that one can be expanded a little bit, enough to fit on there. So I'm going to put this one off to the side too. Let's see, that might work. It's curved over part of it, but not this part. Let's see how close that is. Um, hmm. That's not that far off. That might work too. I'm going to put that off to the side. Oh, look at this. <laughs> a float from a carburetor on a lawnmower. I forgot that was there. 
I remember putting it in there now though. A lot of interesting things in here. It's like a trip down memory lane. I went through all of my tubing and stuff and I think it's going to have to be one of those three there. None of them are perfect. This one's the only tapered one, but it's somewhat curved. So I'm going to have to see if either I can straighten that out or something. Or I'm going to have to take this and shrink and or expand it to make it fit onto there. So, well, it's going to have to be one of these though. I just remembered that I had another box of tubing around. So I'm going to check that one out too and see what I can come up with. Some of these are junk instruments. And let's see what is in here. Huh. Trombone. I wonder if a trombone bell would work for it. The end of the trombone bell. Not the large part, but the smaller part. I just thought of that. Hmm. I'll have to check that out too before I start working on some of the stuff. Uh, that looks, uh, looks like about the right size too, but it's curved. Trumpet bell. Obviously, I don't need to worry about saving this trumpet bell to use it later because, well, it's already broken, so I might be able to cut off the part I need. Hmm. I think I found my part. I think part of this trumpet bell. It's already, it's tapered, it's straight, and I don't have to feel bad about destroying it. So I think I found my part. One time I bought out a music store and this was their box of tubing that they used and I ended up with it. Um, I, think every, <laughs> I think every band instrument repair technician has his own box of tubing laying around somewhere. So anyway, I haven't used this one very much. I've never really needed to, but I guess I used it today. Now I have to cut this, but I would hate to cut it and then find out that I cut it in the middle of where I needed it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure. I remember what these sizes are supposed to be. It was 590 and 615. So I'm going to figure out what the thickness of this metal is and then uh, subtract it. That will help me figure out what the inside diameter needs to be. It looks like about 20 three thousandths and then I have to double that because there are two sides to it so that would be well, let's see it's 22 and a half so about 45 thousandths so 635 thousandths is approximately where it's going to need to be for the small end of it let's see where that is approximately right there so I'm going to mark that and now for the larger end it is about 25 thousandths bigger than that, so about right there. And that is... Huh. All right, well, this is not exactly round because it's different here than it is here. But it should be about right here, so... I'm going to cut that, but I'm going to leave a lot of extra room at first. I'm going to cut it here, cut it here, and then see where it lines up, and then cut it some more. Now I'm going to use the jeweler saw to cut this, and I have a block that I'm cutting it on. It makes it a little easier to cut. In case if you're wondering about the scratches on my hand, no, that is not from band instrument repair. That is from working on some trees that I was cutting, and a saw slipped and it scraped me. It was not a bad injury. It looks bad, but it's not. And I think I've mentioned about injuries on my hands the last three of these videos on the Herald Trumpet Restoration Series. When I work at home, I tend to get injured more than I do when I work at my shop. When I first started out at Band Instrument Repair, I was getting poked and cut all the time. But now that I've been doing it for a while, I don't get cut much anymore. I got that cut. Let's see how it lines up on here. I'm going to mark where it lines up and see how much room there is left. Okay, there's still quite a bit, so I can cut quite a bit more off of here. I'm going to cut the tubing again. This is a triangular knife, also known as a solder scraper. And this works well for cleaning up the burrs on the inside of tubing. So I'm cleaning up all those burrs that I made when I cut the tube. 
I'm going to try this again to see how it fits. Hopefully I didn't go too far. Let's see, I think that's about right. I can pull it pretty tight and it stops right there. So thankfully it did not go too far. I'm going to mark that again and pull it off and see where that lines up. Okay, that is good. That's where I want it to come up to. I cut the tubing and it fits on there nicely on the small part of the bell section and the large part it does go on there too. It's a little tighter though. I'm probably going to end up cutting a little more of this off. I don't think I need all of that length there. So this is the part I'm going to use. It's cut to length and the other parts I'm going to put back in here and maybe I'll use them again some other time. This is a tone hole file and it's usually used for leveling saxophone tone holes. I need to clean this up. It's kind of rough around the edges. So I'm going to use that to get this straightened up and cleaned up. I need to clean up the inside of this tube so that solder will stick to it. I have a metal rod that I put in the bench motor and I put some sandpaper on there. I'm going to spin that around and clean up the inside. That is clean and solder will stick to that. I'm going to put these parts together the way that they were originally. Do you see all those large gaps there? That is not where metal came off of the instrument. What that is, is when metal gets bent, it stretches and it compresses. What you see on this side where there's no gap is that's where the metal stretched. And on the other side, that's where the metal compressed together. Brass is one of those metals that's called malleable, and that means you can stretch it and compress it. That is the reason why when you get any dent in an instrument, and then you take the dent out, you can still see where the dent was. It's because the metal stretches, and that's what we have going on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to file this down a little bit so that it fits together better. It's not going to fit together perfectly, but I want it to fit together a little bit better. And then after that, I'm going to put this on there. I'm going to take some of my smaller files and file this down so that they fit together a little bit better. It's taken a while but I finally got this fit onto there and I had to file these down a little bit more than I was thinking I was going to need to but they do fit together. I have to clean up the lacquer so that the solder sticks to these parts. So I put some masking tape on there to protect the lacquer. I'm going to buff off the lacquer and I'm going to do that with the Triple E buffing compound. So I'm going to take the spindle and put that in the bench motor. I get the buffing wheel on there. And this lacquer is going to come off fairly quickly. There, that's all there is to it. This the lacquer has been cleaned up and solder can stick to that now. Now the next one. These parts are finally ready to go together. I'll slide that over and uh, line it up to the edge of where the lacquer is. Okay, now I have to put this part in there and get that lined up. Let's see, it should fit together one way. There we go. Like that. Okay. Now I need to make sure that it's straight. I got the bell at least reasonably straightened out. I may have to straighten out a little more after I'm done. So I'm going to solder it together now. And I put a piece of metal underneath because I don't want to burn my bench. Um, and I am doing it on the bench because it's going to, oh, it slid apart. I have to put it back together. Or did no, I guess it did not slide apart, it just looked like it did. Okay, let's see. Okay, I guess that's good there. I'll try that again. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing this on my bench because it's hard to solder anywhere else with this long of an item. 
Okay. I want to put enough solder in there, but not too much. If I put too much solder, it's going to go into the cracks, and then it's going to go inside of the bell. I don't want that to happen. So, I'm just going to put on as little as I can, and still have it be good. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to let that solder harden. And then, okay, that's good. Um, then I'm going to check and see how it is. I can roll the bell, and I'm going to roll the bell and see if it goes up and down. It actually is fairly straight. This one will probably not be perfect because it was so messed up in the past. I'm going to finish soldering now. There is just a little bit more solder that is needed. I try to be very careful not to put too much solder onto things. It can be a, the tendency of someone who is new at soldering to add too much solder because you always want to add a little more solder and a little more heat, but you just add exactly what you need and no more. Even when you're experienced at soldering, it's still hard to get it exact. The bell is in one piece and straight again after many, many years of being bent. I have six more pieces to solder on the instrument, but I've done so much soldering lately, I'm not going to weary you with watching me solder six pieces on. So I'm just going to solder these on and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Here's the trumpet. I soldered on the two flag hooks and the two braces. And on the valve section, I soldered on the two finger rings. Next week I'm going to buff, touch up the lacquer, and assemble it back together. And also you'll be able to hear the instrument played. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos.